road in the mirror. Keep it like that. So guys, this is end. Hi everyone, my name is Harjot and you're watching For Love Gadgets. I hope you all are doing good and so are your loved ones. Please do take care of yourself and theirs too in this pandemic situation. If you're in the market looking for a phone which is an all-rounder and has excellent cameras, then Vivo X50 is one device that you should not miss on checking. And it has surprised me like anything. This is the long term review of the Vivo X50 and this is the part 1 in which we are only focusing on the camera. Do note it's important that you go through the interface section to get to know what is the hardware capable of. This is an amazing hardware but what is that it's capable of it's something dependent on the software. So I highly recommend that you should not miss it and that's what we'll start the video with. We'll start the video with the hardware and then We'll move on to the user interface, then photos of front, rear, videos, etc. We are covering around 80 samples. This is one device that can give OnePlus 70 and S10 Lite a run for their money. This is something we are capturing in the second part. I'll give you a glimpse of what to expect. This device comes with a punch hole display. The S10 Lite 2, the 70 doesn't. This has a 90 hertz display which the S10 Lite doesn't. So this basically falls in between and gives you perspective which both miss at some point of time. There's a lot more that you can expect in the second part. Enough said. Now let's start the video because it's a lengthy one and it's all about pure YouTubing. The main sensor is the Sony IMX598 which comes with a large aperture of 1.6. It's a 7P lens and also has Vivo OIS stabilization. Up next is the super wide angle camera which is of 8 megapixel and has a field of view of 120 degrees which is followed by professional portrait camera which is of 13 megapixel. It is a 50 mm prime lens and is capable of 20x zoom. Last but not the least we get a super macro camera which is of 5 megapixel and can shot from a focus distance of 1.5 centimeters. On the front, the Vivo X50 rocks a 32 megapixel camera, which has this cool animation as you open the app. Opening the camera app takes you to the photo mode, which is by default the first option. We'll be starting with the night mode, however. Now, under the night mode, the very first thing on the top you would see is tripod option. Now this is to be used when your phone is super stable. In case your phone finds any movement, it gets deactivated. So this is best used with tripod. In the middle, you have the option to change the aspect ratio, followed by settings at the end. Moving to the settings, you get options like sound, mirror selfie, motion autofocus, video resolution, etc. Vivo X50 can capture videos in 4K at 30fps. Vivo camera app have always been a fun to use. There are nice touches, example style. Using this, you can take pictures in different effects and you can change the intensity too. You can also use the super wide angle in the night mode which is a great option. Portrait is up next. You get style, beauty and bokeh option. With the beauty mode, you can change your skin tone whitening, you can make your face thin and whatnot. Using the Moke mode, you can change the intensity of the background blur that you capture during the picture and later too. On the top, you get HDR and filters to play with. Third in place and by default the option opens up is photo. Here you can choose from super wide angle, bokeh and super macro. Now, interestingly, I found that using the bokeh mode, the flash does not work. Let me show you.
it's also great to see the HDR and the filters option extended to the photo section as well. Fourth up is the video mode. Now you get all the lenses that you can make the video in. You also get filters that you can again play around, increase or decrease their intensity, etc. You also get the ultra stable mode. Now ultra stable mode captures video in 1080p only that is at 60 fps max. Now you saw the clarity. We'll come to the real samples later on. It's good that you can use flash using the ultra mode which is really nice and it uses the main sensor instead of wide angle camera for example in the Samsung S10 Lite. Finally we get to the last option which is more and over here you get 48MP, panorama, live photo, AR stickers and pro mode. Now it's good to see that Vivo is providing pro mode out of the box wherein some phones which call themselves pro grade camera they've got that after seven months. Well I was referring to the Samsung S10 Lite. Now that we have covered the hardware and user interface, we'll move to the photo sample. Now this would be in the format of rear camera, day, evening, night, front camera, day, evening, night, followed by rear videos and then front camera videos. We have covered indoor samples as well. So all of there is there. Let's start. The Vivo X50 captures crisp and sharp images. Colors look great and the color reproduction is spot on. Zooming in gives you a glimpse of the details that the X50 is capable of capturing. Here are some close-up shots. They've come up great. Check out the color reproduction, the reds. And overall, I think the bokeh effect was really good too. Now, I was even more so impressed with the zoom shots. This is a normal shot, look at the picture. Crisp, great colors, excellent dynamic range. Next shot is a 10x zoom. The colors have come up nice. Look at the shade. There's a green shade in it and that is how it is from the inside. This is a picture which is at 20x zoom. It has come soft, not that great in detail, but it's kind of usable. However, overall, I am really impressed with the zoom capability of this device. With the X50, you can get real close to the subject. Have a look at these two pictures. Check out the ant, the yellow edges of the flower. It looks really nice. As we move to the evening samples, we captured these shots at 6.30 in the evening. Now the first shot is a normal mode picture, followed by a super wide angle camera shot. See the color parity, the green, the blue, they have come up correctly. Now moving to non-HDR and HDR shots. Once again, the camera did not disappoint us. In the next picture, have a look at the house on the left hand side and the greenery around it. In this picture, it has come nice. The house is highlighted more. So good job. The night mode is subtle. It does not lead to oversaturation or exposure. See yourself. You can also add some effects like we did. It's quite dark. Let's capture some pictures. I'll capture three pictures, one with the normal mode, followed by night and tripod mode. Let's start with the normal mode. It took around good two seconds. Now generally I've seen in other phones in the normal mode the pictures get captured then and there. As you move to the night mode, see for yourself it has already gone bright. Now the first picture is without the night mode. Here the night mode kicks in and you can see how better it has become. And this is with the tripod mode on. We have got another example but then before that let me show you how good the flash is. You can see the trucks, barely visible, barely. Now, boom.
Now this is an indoor example. Once again, the light is not ample, thanks to the 1.6 aperture. We'll go through the same drill and you'll see the difference I was talking about. It's always interesting to see the time it takes to capture pictures in different modes, be it normal, night or tripod. Have a look at this and it does make a difference as well guys. This time it took me around 3 seconds and the tripod option was turned off. I'll switch that on and you can see for yourself the time it will take. That's why it is always recommended to use the tripod mode using tripod only. It took around 7 seconds. Let me show you how good the flash is in this video sample. Watch it carefully, it's bright white, which I really like. As you view these portrait shots, you would see there is no problem with the edge detection. At least, there was no major issue. Moreover, you can add filters along with the portrait pictures like this one. I added the rainbow effect. The next one is something I really like, wherein the background is black and white, wherein the subject is colorful. All in all, I am really, really impressed so far. Now, if you are someone who like using AR stickers, Vivo gives that option too. Friends, if you're liking the video and you think I've put in enough efforts and I'm giving you a perspective that's really helpful, valuable, please do subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon for all. Share the video with your friends and family and do comment and let me know if you have any query. These are some outdoor samples. It was really bright. First picture, look at the color of the grill. Yellow, green, my turban. The blacks have come up really nice and so is the dynamic range. Now these two shots are without the HDR mode and the camera is directly facing the sun. But as you turn on the HDR, the picture comes a little better. However, I think there could be some improvement done. As we move to indoor shots, once again, check the color of my turban, deep black. The stripes on my shirt are yellow, that's how they are. If you see, there's a pillow just around my shoulder. The red is picked up very nicely and so is the color of the wall. If you are thinking that how would the portrait and filter shots from the front camera would come, I think this one came really good. Colors, the edge detection. However, this is the second shot and I can see there is a slight mess near my collar, but nothing heavy to complain. Overall, I'm happy. Now this is a tricky shot and there is a hit and miss in this one. I found a similar trend in filter based shots like this one. This one came great just a slight miss once again around my collar. This one with the temperature gun, I think uh, they could have been a little bit better around the gun, but I think it's again a tricky shot. All in all, I can say that the portrait and filter shots need a slight improvement. It's not a deal breaker. Up next is a non HDR pick. See the grill, it's not visible behind me. And as I take an HDR shot, the grill is clearly visible. Though the overall color and sharpening could have been a little better. Now this shot is in low light, indoor, no tube light, no bulb on, but as I turn on the night mode, it improves the quality overall. So it's a night shot I would say. Now here is a demo as to what exactly happens when you click a night shot from the front camera, how long it takes and I'll show you the exact pic which we captured out of this and here you go. So this is the pic and I must say it has come up really nice. Uh, the color of the shirt, the turban, the background was good. Now this is a sample of little more dark environment followed by a night shot and then followed by a shot using the fill light which is within the application. Now the fill light uh, does good but I think it kind of gives that haziness touch 
to the front uh, camera picture so i think a little more improvement will be welcome now this is a 4k video sample that i'm recording with the x50 i'm walking and i must say that the ois is working flawlessly i don't find any shake happening it's very controlled i'll just pan around now and you can see how good the color of the sky has been picked up this video has been made using the ultra stable mode the main sensor is used instead of any other be it wide angle mainly this is a great implementation and i think companies who generally use the wide angle camera for ultra stable or super steady videos should look into and definitely adopt this This is one section that impressed me the most, the ultra stable mode. Now, in S10 Lite, the S10 Lite uses the wide angle camera, but the Vivo X50 used the main sensor. I really like it because the video came out a lot clearer, wherein in S10 Lite, you can understand it's an 8 megapixel wide angle camera, and in low light, it actually goes for a toss. So, guys, as you can see clearly, we are recording this video with the Vivo X50, and this time we are making it without the ultra mode on ultra stable mode on and there is no external mic things you should note number one the road is fully scratched by jcbs because it's getting constructed again you can see the grooves it's difficult to keep the bike in the straight line and there are small patches so it's bumpy but then see the quality for yourself. There is no shake at all. And at this point, the road gets smooth. So you can see the difference I was riding the bike in earlier and now. And at the end, uh, we try to keep the phone in the rear view mirror so as to show you that yes, we are recording with the X50. And as for my wife is concerned, she tried not to rest her hand on my shoulder, which I was very clear about, though she's new. But trust me guys, we have ensured that the phone was not resting on my shoulder. Hope you like the clarity. I now will move to the ultra mode picture, rather video, and let me show you how does that looks. So guys, this video is using the ultra stable mode. So let's see how does that work. You can see for yourself how bumpy the road is. Now in the ultra stable mode the video gets cropped and once again I am not using any external mic. However the quality is something we will see but I think I am confident that it would be really good. Now the road is getting a little smooth so I will switch off lane you can see the road condition as well that I am riding where at. I'll stop making the video now. So let's this is a video sample from the front camera of the Vivo X50. Now, as I told earlier, this is a 32 megapixel sensor, and the video gets made at 1080p. It's way too hot from my liking, but then this is what pure YouTubing is all about, isn't it? So let me take a walk. I'll walk quickly, and you can see how is the stabilization. Wow. Now I'll just pan toward other side and then to the sky just to see how the colors get picked up. Okay. There we have it. This is a video sample in indoor lighting captured using the Vivo X50's front camera. 
Now this camera, I've already told is of 32 megapixel and can capture 1080p video at 30 FPS. We are not using any external mic. The fan is turned on just to give you a perspective that how is the sound quality. Now I'll come closer to the camera to see the level of details it can pick. Please don't be scared, no? So you can clearly see the pores. I mean, just look at the clarity it picks, the detail it picks. You can see the mark, mark either here. So just kidding. I'm sure you would have watched Andaz Apna Apna. So I think I'm really happy with the overall performance. I'll just pan around so as to see in different indoor lighting condition, how does it works. So now I'm not facing the light and you can see the clarity. I'll again move to the left a bit more, a bit more and you can see how does it works. Coming back to the original frame, sorry, of course I'm using a tripod because I have to move it around but do let me know how did you find the clarity. I mean I can see the colors of the curtain, even the t-shirt is coming actually how it is. So this was a sample of the front camera. Now I'll create another sample with a little less light which would be low light performance. Let's switch it to that. Now this is low light performance and you can see I've turned off the light that goes here. You can clearly see it's not turned on. And there's only one light that I have on which is this. So you can see for yourself how is it working. I think it's doing a great job. Still there's no impact on the colors. The colors are right. Yes picture has become soft but I think it's doing a very good job. To activate this option you click on the old camera like icon which is the second last one. Post that you start the recording and tap the subject. At this point of time we have used Ganesh G's idol and as I'm moving the camera here and there the camera is ensuring that the focus is on the Ganesh G's idol only. The best thing is that you can use a flash however it left me wanting for some more because the resolution is 720p at 30 fps i think this could have been at least 1080p at 30 fps at 60 fps it would have been wonderful but then it's a great feature if you have a baby in home or you want to capture something a moving ball or anything i think it will help you a lot in case your baby is dancing or there are children who are dancing moving left to right the pace has to be kept in mind as well but i think it's a well added feature i really like it but yeah it left me wanting for some more overall happy with it talking about the pro sports mode i thought this aunt will make it easy for me but no sir the aunt i think had some nervous breakdown but then I was lucky to have the pro sports mode on the Vivo X50. Here are some pictures. Using motion autofocus, you can ensure that the subject is in focus. You can keep it on auto, use it for left eye or right eye for focus and can have different animations. My daughter gave it a hard time, but it did a great job. See for yourself. These are some normal shots versus 48 megapixel shots. The clarity is good, the size is huge. So I would only recommend you to use it when you need to get into some details like anything else. You can stick to the normal shot. Just have a look at these ones. As told earlier, the X50 comes with the Pro Mode out of the box. You can always cherish the camera capabilities with the manual mode, ISOs and shutter speeds. Here are some shots that I captured. Next up is the Super Macro Shots and once again, I'm really impressed. Have a look at this and now have a look at this. I have never imagined I'll be able to capture a shot like this. 
Here are some samples that I took alongside the S10 Lite which I own and once again the depth that it can go into is a lot more. Let's move to the blind test. Here are some pictures. Let me know which one is the S10 Lite and which is the Vivo X50. Now these are the original pictures and you can see which one is which and they're in the same order. Here is the last and the final sample. Once again, let me know which one do you think is Vivo X60 and S10 Lite and there you go. They are exactly how they were in the comparison snapshot. This is a slow motion video sample. Let me know how did you like the clarity. At this point, I would really like you to comment and let me know. You can make macro videos and as well as time lapse. The best thing, you can turn off and on the flash while recording the video too, which in some phones you cannot. You either have to stop the video or you simply can't. So friends, that's it for this video. I hope you have liked it. And if you have liked it, like the efforts and you think I've given the right perspective and detailed information that probably a person who's spending 30, 40,000 needs, please do subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon. Share the video with your friends and family. Comment if you have any query. Now, as for the device is concerned, I can definitely say being a user of S10 Lite and used 70, this is at par and even better in some areas. Yes, there are some shortcomings which we have highlighted in the video. For example, smart zoom can be 1080p. Uh, the photos from the front camera can be improved a little bit. So this is fairly new. I'm sure with two or more updates, the quality will improve only. And I'm sure you will definitely like, I would just urge you to have a look at it. It's easily available in local stores. You can go to Chroma, you can go to Reliance stores and you will see it will surprise you. On that note, this is Harjot. Thanks for staying on the video. Take care and please stay safe.